Uh, today, my, the title of my uh, talk is Groundwater Resources uh, in Urban Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, the story from Kabwe in Zambia. Uh, I'm, my name is Dan Latworth and I'm from the British Geological Survey. And before I start, I would like to acknowledge uh, my uh, co-investigators in this work, Daniel Nkua from the University of Zambia and Steve Pedley uh, from the University of Surrey. I'll be drawing on some findings from the story uh, in Kabwe, but I also feel that this fits in well with the overall narrative of the challenges and also the opportunities for groundwater use in urban and peri-urban settings in sub-Saharan Africa. So this slide uh, gives a little bit of context and background to this issue. Uh, first of all, uh, groundwater is the largest uh, single uh, freshwater resource that there is in Africa um, and there are many urban areas spread across uh, sub-Saharan Africa as you can see in the figure on the left hand side of the slide which are dependent on groundwater. However at a continental scale you can see that there is a bit of a mismatch between uh, the large groundwater resources uh, highlighted in blue and the large population uh, densities highlighted in red. And if you look at uh, the, the right hand side of the side of this slide, you can see a figure um, which shows areas uh, where we're likely to see uh, exceptionally high levels of population growth in the future. And these are focused uh, around sub Saharan Africa and, in particular, the Lake Victoria Basin and parts of uh, the west coast of Africa. So there are a large number of pressures on groundwater resources uh, and still limited coordination of investment in WASH. Large population growth is forecasted for this region and this puts additional pressures on the provision of safe drinking water. So I'd like to tell the story of Kabwe. Uh, Kabwe is the main town in Zambia's central province through the eyes of a man called Joseph, a resident who grew up in Kabwe. And on hearing his story, I was struck by how things had changed remarkably since he was young and how this was in stark contrast with many uh, of, of those um, young people growing up in Kabwe today. So Joseph saw Kabwe grow up so while Joseph was growing up in Kabwe in, in the uh, 70s, um, Kabwe was a booming mine town uh, and an important transport hub for the central province. We can see uh, what's left over from the mining headworks in these pictures. During the 70s and 80s, the prosperity of the town grew with the favourable international prices for metal. But unfortunately, this was not to last. And as the market price for metal collapsed, so did the economy of Kabwe and the surrounding area. Joseph recalled to me a fact that he remembers when he, when he was growing up in Kabwe that many of the households uh, during this period had access to a tap, to water directly from a tap. This was treated water as well as a raw water point, point in the garden. And this is in stark contrast with the situation we see today. The next slide that I'm showing shows some of the historical investment uh, that was undertaken within Kabwe uh, as part of this uh, development during the mining period. There was significant investment in the wash structure during this period. And if we visit Kabwe today, we can see the original infrastructure still being used. Um, and some of it seems to have been abandoned as well. The picture in the top left uh, shows uh, part of a dedicated well field out of town that's now been abandoned uh, and is fairly uh, un unfunctional. The town of Kabwe has expanded hugely since this time over the last 20 years or so and this has happened in a largely haphazard way and the infrastructure within Kabwe has not kept pace with this, with this expansion. In addition, the economic downturn felt across Zambia more generally, has meant, that, have, has meant that many households in Kabwe cannot afford the costs associated with municipal uh, water provision and sanitation. So 
So there have been some there have been some recent uh, wash efforts in some areas of Cabway, but these have been limited uh, to some very small areas. These have included uh, the upgrade uh, of pit latrines and septic tanks, um, the upgrade of, of water provision uh, to include treated pipe water to households, and there's, there's even discussions uh, on expanding the wellfield area out of town and perhaps uh, developing an aqua farm to protect uh, the area directly around the wellfield. So there's been some recent funding from the Zambian government, and this has made a difference in some households, but only for a very small fraction of those who are most at risk in Cabway's low-income areas. And there has been also a trend uh, for the more wealthy parts of Cabway to shift away from public supply to a mixed uh, private public supply using their own deeper boreholes. Um, and this is largely due to the um, uh, to the failure of the municipal supply in terms of their their um, their provision being very intermittent and unreliable. So the current situation in Cabway can be summed up in this slide here. Really, three main factors, and in a inadequate and unaffordable provision of treated water from municipal sources, very low sanitation coverage, uh, as low as 11% in the low income areas in, in Cabway, and a high dependence on self-supply from shallow, unsafe sources. So this next slide uh, shows just a summary of some of the water quality um, uh, results that we found as part of our um, field work that we undertook in Cabway. This shows a map of the risk classes uh, for different sources of water, wells shown in the circles and boreholes shown in the triangles within Cabway, both within the original uh, original extent uh, of, the, of, the, of the city is shown in purple, as well as some of the surrounding um, uh, low-income settlements on the edge of town. The areas, or the, the points highlighted in green, are the out-of-town uh, Kalulium and Makalulu well fields. So the darker the colour uh, of the point, uh, the more at risk or more vulnerable uh, the, the water point is, the higher the fecal coliform counts that the water point had. In summary, we can see that there's a high degree of risk uh, from shallow wells and also uh, from some of the deeper boreholes, particularly those located within, uh, within the urban areas, within the older urban areas in the centre of the town. Generally speaking, the boreholes on the outside of town within the whale fields show good quality, as are highlighted in the green areas. Improved wells, in many cases, those within the urban and also within the, the peri-urban uh, newer developments uh, in Makalulu, which is that, that cluster uh, of, of uh, round points to the south uh, east of the, of the town, um, in all cases are providing poor water poor water quality, both for improved wells as well as unimproved traditional wells. In the low income areas to the um, west of the map, there is a dependence on fewer high risk groundwater sources during the dry season. And this is a particular issue in Cabway. Uh, during the, towards the end of the, of the, the dry season, the water tables drop considerably and there's dependence on fewer and fewer points within this area. So in summary, the current water quality status in Cabri can, can be described as follows. Within the shallow groundwater system, these are highly vulnerable to contamination all year. There's evidence of very rapid pathways during the wet season that are activated. 
There's poorer microbiological water quality overall in the wet season, although this is also very bad in the dry season. All wells, unimproved and improved, were found to be high risk. And there are fewer water points available during the end of the dry season. This is in contrast with the deeper groundwater system, which is accessed by boreholes. We find here significantly better water quality. The main risks are from poor, in, poor borehole integrity and poor sanitary seals. However, there are some boreholes within the older urban areas which show evidence of vertical migration of contaminants, and some of these sites were contaminated uh, with nitrate. So the current situation for many urban settings can be summed up as follows. There's inadequate and unaffordable municipal provision of water in low and low sanitation coverage. And in, as well as this, there is a dependence on self-supply from unsafe shallow groundwater sources. And this story we have seen in Cabway is also reflected across many parts of Africa and many parts that I've worked in in West Africa as well. So to summarise, here, here's a few uh, summary points and perhaps a, a few ideas about the way forward. From our research, we've highlighted that we need to understand, in particular, the rapid lateral pathways within tropical soils. And this raises interesting questions uh, about the use of lateral uh, separation distances uh, within the risk, risk framework for water points. Um, pollution is essentially diffuse in urban areas, so this is perhaps a not an appropriate framework. Instead, we need to perhaps think about vertical separation between water points and sources of contamination. Social and economic factors are extremely important within these settings. These may include costs, land tenure issues, uh, as well as societal norms for using water points. And also the, the inadequacy and intermittent uh, alternative sources from the municipal supplies. And we need to understand the key barriers uh, that there are here for WASH implementation. A review of the literature has also highlighted that there are only actually a handful of good water quality studies available across Africa and much more research is needed, particularly in this area. There are a couple of techniques that we were able to trial and pilot as part of our research. Um, and this included uh, using um, molecular methods, uh, DNA tracking uh, techniques to characterize the pathogens that were contaminated these water point sources as well as more traditional indicators such as faecal indicator bacteria. And I feel that these are important areas that can be exploited in the future for understanding contamination. We also need to develop and use uh, simple field-based tools to rapidly assess water quality risks, uh, which are alternative, which are an alternative to traditional culture methods, which are expensive, time-consuming, and very difficult to use within this sort of context. Well, thank you very much uh, for listening. Um, I've got a few uh, points on further information uh, on this last slide. This, I just want to point out a few things. There's a recent article come out in Planet Earth, and there's a web link for that. Uh, our first journal paper on this work uh, has come out recently, and hopefully there'll be more to follow on this. Uh, there's a video. Uh, from the IH conference in 2014 and the link there which you can follow to find out more about our work in Cabway and to find out a bit more about uh, BGS groundwater activities internationally please feel free to follow the link below uh, and also please if you have any other questions following on from this webinar uh, my details uh, are on this slide uh, and please feel free to email me thank you very much